Good morning, Magnang Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, right? Tuesday or Monday? Wait, 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 wait. It is. Today is Monday, and <laughs> it's the beginning of the work week. I should have known that because yesterday was a uh, it was a Sunday, and it was a relaxing Sunday uh, as well. Uh, even though we had some work that went on here at the build site. So anyway, today is Monday. It's the first day of the work week, and it is built a 326. It's built day 326 on a construction schedule here at Villa Feliz. This morning, as you can see, as I opened up the uh, the very beginning of the video, we have our uh, our ironworks team. They are on site this morning, bright and early at 8:30. Uh, I thought they were going to bring brought five or six of the iron rails uh, for the fence top right here. No, they didn't bring five. They didn't bring six. They didn't bring seven. Let's cut to the chase. They brought 10 sections this morning. And uh, like I said, I am not worried about this team. This team is motivated and they're going to get things done right and they're going to get things done on time. I have full confidence in this construction team here. Uh, so they're going to get that done. They're working ahead of schedule. They're pushing to get all this done uh, on time. So we'll kind of watch them as they're doing some of the install today. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the questions that they have as far as uh, some other things in our fencing uh, as we get into today's episode. So let's go ahead and get today's episode underway. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. So let's talk a little bit about what the Ironworks team is doing here and how they have a strategy and how they are doing things organized. Uh, I don't know if you could see, but they're looking. They, ha they actually have all of the segments numbered. Because remember, every one of these blocks, even though they're supposed to be, they are supposed to be in an ideal world, everyone would be spaced exactly the same amount. Uh, we don't live in an I ideal world. We live in the Philippines. Uh, so you, it's going to be very hard pressed to get anything exact. Uh, when, I, when I say that, you know the struggles that we've had getting walls plumb, getting walls square, uh, everything like that. Uh, hopefully the wind isn't bothering you too much right now. But anyway, uh, this team, they have everything numbered. They did measurements. They did precise measurements for each one of the segments inside here. And what they also did was they numbered them. And what they also did was they left a little bit of extension I'm hoping they did. That's what they said they were going to do. A little bit of an extension off the end of each one of them where they will secure it uh, to the plate, the, the flat plate, uh, the flat bar here that goes here. So right now they don't have this last connection. What they're going to do is they, when they, they're going to mount the flat bar first, which is logical. They'll mount it, they'll secure it so it's perfectly up tight up against the uh, fence post. And then what they will do, they will trim whatever excess that they have off of the end of the, the fence segment, then they will weld it and it will be a perfect tight uh, fit in between each one of the column uh, fence post segments. Uh, that's one of the things that they've done here today. And as I spoke earlier, I was gonna to talk to you about some of the things that we discussed about some of the other build here, specifically the fence gates. The fence gate that is gonna go here uh, on the driveway and the walkthrough up there. Uh, not so much about the walkthrough, we're gonna talk about the fence that fence uh, material, the ironworks that goes through these sections, the uh, the service entrance and the main driveway. Now, we requested that when you, uh, or when this team installs and builds and designs this segment right here, this part of the fence line continues on the top of the service entrance gate. But you cannot, and they identified that and they let me know this morning, they cannot use the same thickness, which is a little bit thinner than you would normally use. Uh, for a regular gate, we cannot use that same thickness material for the entire segment or the gate, the gate material would be weak. So what they're going to do in return uh, to correct that, uh, not to correct it actually for the initial design so it is done right the first time, uh, we're going to go ahead and use this section the same across the top, but this bottom section right here, we're gonna beef up the steel inside there. It's gonna be more of a heavy duty uh, gate material. So when it's hinged up against the post inside there, and uh, for the base strength, it will be a stronger piece of uh, metal work inside there. 
so we don't have any problem with flexing or anybody trying to jam through it will have a it'll be more secure and it will be stronger for the duration Anyway, we have to do a quick uh, run. Remember, I do not like those black stones that are in our in our uh, uh, lanai, the patio, the barbecue patio in the back. So what we are going to do, we are going to run downtown where they sell the stones and we're gonna pick a sample, maybe a different size, maybe a different color. So uh, myself and Shinji, we are going together. We're gonna go uh, see if we can find some building material. Well, here we are at the company called Stoneworks. This is where my builder purchased those black stones that we put inside, uh, the ones that we're gonna try to replace. He said this is a place that has a very good supply of different types of stones inside here. So we're gonna go and we're gonna see what they have in their inventory. So while we're here, one of the things we also want to look at, remember we have to have the stonework that goes around all the columns. And they have some pretty good examples inside, some pretty good samples. And right now, on all the samples that I've looked at here so far in the store, I, I kind of like these. Uh, if you take a look at these, I don't know which would look the best for, with the color selection that we've used for the concrete hollow block wall and also that would reflect good on the house itself. Uh, so we'll, I'll look at these samples right here. Uh, maybe I'll even pick up one of each and, and take it back as a sample and we can put it up on the side and take a look. So today we're trying to get the correct procedure because I don't think my builder uh, and my, or maybe my builder knows, but, but the, his worker that he has, our, our, uh, our tile person, I don't think he knows how to accurately do the installation of the cover rock. So I came to the expert right here. This is Janelle. <laughs> and Janelle is explaining to me the correct procedure on how to apply pebble rock. So what he says, you, you can take the, the, the Por Portland cement. So you don't add sand to your mixture. It's not like we're doing mortar mix. You actually take the Portland cement and you, you mix water with it until you get a standard consistency of the cement mix. Or, or, or what might be construed as mortar without the sand. Then what you do, once you get a standard mixture inside there, you mix your pebbles. You mix your pebbles, which are these bags of pebbles that they have inside of here. Once you do that, then you fill in that half inch gap. You have about a half inch gap inside there. You put the, uh, the mixture that you have inside there. Then after about 15 minutes, 10, 10 to 10 to 15. Uh, so around 15 minutes you do your first wipe down until you get a consistency that's going to be like this so you see you see your stone uh, see your stonework you don't wait an hour you don't wait you don't wait a long time because what happens if you wait too long what's going to happen is what happened with our mixture you all you see is the cement the cement is already dried it's in a partial curing state and it becomes very difficult to get that concrete mix or that, that uh, uh, portland cement mix off of the top of those pebbles which is why we're going to have to remove all of our pebble mix uh, then you would do just like you would do a standard grout uh, application and wash up you would go inside and you would slowly keep wiping the top of the rock so it becomes nice and clean and you actually see your pebbles just like you see here now you're probably wondering why is each one of these pebble mixes here we see a, a like a non-shiny and a shiny mix on here 
Uh, the reason they have an application is a coating that they put on the top. If you want this this type of a uh, mixture on the top that brings out it brings out a really nice color, but there's also a con that goes against it. If you put that as part of your main walking area, that becomes very slippery. As a matter of fact, I was warned about that by the uh, the other house ho homeowner in the subdivision. He said uh, there's a problem with his. It, when it rains and those uh, uh, those pebbles get wet, this becomes very slippery. So you can leave it in this state right here, which is a non-slip surface at that point, which is actually a safety factor. Uh, so we're gonna we're we're gonna take the uh, the lesser of the two evils, or we can say we're gonna do the best approach for safety, and we're not gonna add the coating. And what do you call this coating that you put on the top? Glossy glossy sealer. Glossy sealer. It's a glossy sealer. But if you want it, and you want that glossy sealer in a place that you are not stepping on, that may be something that you want to put. And this is what the glossy sealer looks like right here. Whitlock. Whitlock. So, oh, okay, I see. Wet look sealer, uh, solvent sealer. So that's what they use on the top. If you want that really shiny, cool kind of look and you're not worried about stepping on it or slipping. So anyway, thanks for the help on that. Well, I learned something new today. You don't have to use exactly what's inside the bag at a single color. You can make your own mixture, which is what we're doing today. I showed them a picture. They looked at the colors that are inside there, and it's a mixture of four different colors that we're using here. We're going to use the uh, the sable, the sable black, along with the white, along with the red, a little bit of green, and some of the, these... They're sort of like a, a natural uh, stone color. Uh, is that four or five? I don't know how many colors I just went through. So we're gonna do the mixture, but the primary color is going to be uh, the white, the white pebble right here. So that's going to be a two to one for the other colors that we have inside here. And that will ideally give us the uh, mixture that we want. Remember, the, the color that you want is only up to you. It's your imagination. You can put together anything that you want. Well, we got almost all the stone that we needed. The old uh, out of stock snake reared its head again today. No stock, no stock on the green, uh, the green stone that they had in the side there. But it's not a big deal. I wasn't really big on the green stone anyway, and I was only gonna use a third. Uh, sorry about the wind here right now. It's kind of windy out here. Uh, hope it's, hopefully it's not wreaking havoc. I'm trying to protect the, uh, the, mi the microphone on the camera. So they didn't have it, but we're going to make our mixture up without the green stone anyway. We are stopping here really quick at McKilling. We're going to see if they have the handrails for the basement up to the first floors. We'll see if they have the hardware and the handrails in stock. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? How's everybody today? So looking through the, the inventory that they have here at McKilling, they have three types of uh, the, the handrails inside here. I was hoping that we could use the same handrail that we have for the main baluster going up, the main set of stairs going from uh, the first floor to the second floor, uh, but uh, they're telling me that the one that we're using, the really big one, is too big and we should be using a smaller uh, width for the basement that hooks up to the, to the wall. Uh, so what we're going to go with, they have different styles. I'll let you look at some of the styles. They have these, um, when you look at, kind of has this little indention right here and it's very flat, flat on the top right here. And then they have this style right here that it's a little bit flat, but they have a nice rounded side right here. Uh, and then of course they have the original one. This is what we installed for the main stairways going up the handrail that goes uh, to, the, to the steps themselves. Uh, this is actually quite large and it might be too big for the wall size. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with something a little simpler. Uh, remember, we just need the hand, a very small hand rail aside, and that's for as a safety factor. As a matter of fact, it's by code. Uh, code says you have to have uh, handrails for different types of steps and, and situations like that. So we're going to go ahead and get this one right here. Now, another dilemma. We're always hitting these dilemmas, these obstacles, but we're going to survive. We're going to surpass. Uh, they don't have the hardware here. And what they're telling me is that's, that's not standard. They don't normally have that in the store, the hardware that mounts underneath and wraps around and connects to the wall. Uh, what they're saying here in the Philippines is you have your ironworks person fabricate those. Uh, we're still going to look, we'll, when we run up to, we still have to make a trip up to Alabang, Santa Rosa, 
and we have to go to uh, Calamba and we'll look at some of the stories there. We're not in a super hurry for this, but I'd like to get this done as soon as possible. If we have to, remember we have our Ironworks team on site right now. We'll ask them their recommendations as well uh, about the, their ability to go ahead and provide that for us. So we're going to go ahead and pick this up today. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that home and we're going to get back to the build at Villa Feliz. Anyway, it is lunchtime. The crew are down and they are taking their break. They're taking their siesta, like they need a siesta, but they're taking their siesta. And uh, we have our, our, our install team here for the tempered glass that we have. Anyway, you remember Kit, Kit Sanchez right here. Uh, he's the owner, he's the owner of Centro uh, Glass Solutions right here from Batangas, uh, here, here in Lipa. And they are doing the install of the glass. Remember uh, our team that came out and did our cabinets, uh, they, they failed to install the glass properly underneath the, the cabinets. We'll go inside, we'll watch them doing the marking and doing the, uh, the installation of the glass there. Plus they're gonna do the installation of the glass around the stone wall if they have that if they brought that with them today i don't know what they have today and we're going to get them to do the measurements for the doors for the uh, base for the basement garage doors they're going to be doing the install of that but they don't have that yet they have to do the measurement first make a template and do uh, the uh, creation of those windows uh, so let's go see what kit and his team are doing Well, one of the things that Kit and his team here have to do, they have to uh, cut the holes inside the new glass using the template or using the existing marks that they did from the, uh, the mounts that are inside the kitchen cabinet. And that's what they're doing right now. So they're using a special tip a uh, cutting bit that they have inside there and I believe it has it's sort of like a diamond carbide type of a bit that they use and it will cut through glass uh, it's very similar to some of the t uh, bits that they would use to cut through ceramic if you had to cut a hole in the wall for ceramic as well and they used a little bit of the water inside there so you don't get too much friction inside there and it will it will help with uh, making sure that you don't burn out that blade since I'm not a guru when it comes to installing fencing, uh, the ironworks that these guys do out here, uh, I have a recommendation, and this is going to be one of the tips of the day today. When you're installing, if you're doing concrete hollow block, just like this for the base, and you, of course they always run rebar inside, you have to have vertical, uh, vertical and horizontal rebar installed uh, for support to make sure that your wall is strong and doesn't crack and break apart. Uh, if you can ask them when they're doing that to put a piece of rebar in the center of the top of your concrete hollow block, uh, maybe maybe five centimeters down, something like that, so that your fence team, if you're doing a fence similar to this, they can weld this bar right here to the uh, to the rebar that's inside. If you look over here, you see the rebar, and, and that's what these guys are doing. And that's much better than if you're not going super deep inside there and where they were putting the tea before, which could act when you shake it, you can actually cause a break inside of the concrete on the top. But if they weld it directly to the rebar, it's much more sturdy. And it's even without right now, right now, even without it being filled in with the uh, mortar on the top of it, it's, it's very strong. Uh, tip of the day. what they're doing right now they're putting a coating on the back it's sort of like that when you put the tent inside your car on the windows and then you got to squeegee out all the air bubbles and things like that that's sort of what they're doing right here well that's that's exactly what they're doing right here and what that's going to do that's going to it's going to be a diffused light that comes through so you can't see any of the wires that are up underneath between the glass 
and the, the cabinet area and if there's any place like uh, at the very top of where the mosaic is and there's a gap inside there that doesn't have any uh, grout or anything like that it will hide all that and you will just get diffused light that comes down above the sink and the counter area As you can see, it is the end of the workday. It's uh, just after five o'clock. Everybody is uh, packing up, getting ready to uh, bail here from today. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about some of the things that might be going on tomorrow. And I and what, the reason I say might because you can get indicators. There are flags sometimes that you'll see, even though they, a lot of your workers or your contractor might not tell you what's going on. Uh, you can see what their approach is for the next day and we'll do that as well but let's also do a wrap up and let's do a what we might think might happen tomorrow type of a closing today anyway for today let's look since we're standing right here let's look at what we have done on the front steps going up into the house what we have today remember yesterday we only had one step done for yesterday which was that one right there now uh, we have the second one done third one and the fourth one started we just don't have the end pieces right here uh, for the you know the non-slip tread that is going on there um also one of the questions today was are we going to put these are we going to put them on the edge over here and i said yes since this is a step every place has a step first for safety we will be putting these these uh edge protectors right here remember they're rounded if you fall you don't want to hit, hit anything sharp so these are nice and rounded here and what we're going to do we're going to come to here we're going to do a 45 degree cut here and then we're going to continue it on around it's going to go around this way and even though it's curved the, the curve isn't so bad we, we don't have to do anything on this portion but for the connection uh, from one to the next we're going to have to do a little bit of a, a small adjustment on the on the angle right here so we'll do a little bit of trimming off on this side and this side and they will match up and then we will have uh, a very small gap inside there for the ground we're going to come all the way around just for aesthetics look here and, th and that's a personal preference you can do whatever you want to if you wanted to you could even go back this way and you could make this like everything on the inside could be in like a frame we might even do that too i don't know also i want you to look at the door here the door was stained today you see the color of the door and but that's not the finished coat uh tomorrow uh, they will do some more preparation with this right here and they will do a spray for the final coat just like is on the front door of the house it'll be a nice very nice finish on there and it's going to be that that satin what do they call it it's, it's like a satin coat they're going to put on the egg a satin eggshell or the, the very soft and they were still working on sanding on this one today as well they, they were working on sanding on the back side of that one today uh while we're down here instead of looking at everything else that was done which there wasn't really much more than what we're looking at right now uh, for the the home crew here uh, you can see this is sitting here and why is this sitting here right now I asked my builder one of the priorities I asked him to please get all the grading installed for one two and three of the trenches right here uh, that's a priority for me because that's a priority we need to get that knocked out so that we can clean out those trenches and we put some screening inside there and prepare it for any type of rain that might be coming up in the upcoming months. But that's uh, in preparation. Uh, if we are not here, all that needs to be done. So they're going to be working on that. I think I think what they're going to be doing is they will have to do framing. They have to measure. They have to get frames there, frames there, and frames here. And the frame I'm talking about is this frame that you can't see uh, that it actually sits inside of. The, uh, the galvanized uh, grating sits inside the framing. Uh, they have to do that. They have to measure it, weld it, and then do that for install. And you can see over my shoulder, we have some more fencing installed today. So we're moving, we're moving very good on the fence install. Guys are doing a great job. Uh, all the welding that's being done today, uh, making sure everything is measured to perfection. So we have a good tight fit and they added that additional anchor. So we have three anchors in the bottom now instead of two. 
right now what they're doing after they did the install uh, for what we have today they're doing touch up this is touch up coating of the flat black that we have for the uh, for the for the ironwork itself and that's done after you do welding after you do grinding and that protects it that's like an undercoat uh, it does protection from the uh, from the elements so you don't get rust or anything like that on your ironwork even Ness is working today. She's working to get me wet is what she's doing. I know that's what she, she always does that. She doesn't give me any warning. But Ness is working on uh, weeding. She actually likes to weed. I don't know, I don't know what it is. I, she, but uh, she gets a kick out of defeating uh, the weeds. And that's what, she, that's what she's been doing. You see that blue bucket over there. That blue bucket is full of these weeds. Now, uh, they, again, I might have talked about it earlier. Uh, but I don't think they do it in the Philippines. In the U.S., prior to putting down a new sod, they do a kill. They kill. I think maybe we talked about this earlier. Uh, but they kill everything underneath. They put a, uh, it's like a, a grass killer, and, it, and it, it removes everything. The weeds and the grass, it kills everything. And they, uh, later on, after that's all rinsed away and uh, the grass is stable again, then they put down sod. If you don't do something like that, you are going to get weeds like this weed right here these are harbor weeds and they are deep we actually have a tool right now uh, uh, since this is so wet back here i might be able to pull i hope i can pull this guy out um but what we've been doing oh here and it's pulling up a lot of my bluegrass but we'll get the bluegrass to go back down again what we'll do we'll pull this let me show you the, the roots on this weed get this up put our bluegrass back down on the ground but this this is what you get now that the soil and, and the way for you to pull manually pull this up is you you need a couple of inches of wet soil which is what we've been doing back here uh, of course it's new sod new sod requires a lot you need a very good wet base for your sod to take take root very well and then start spreading uh, but this is what we have to get rid of lots and we have hundreds and hundreds of these back here uh, but it's something if you're going to plant in the Philippines and you don't kill the soil or you don't kill the, the grass and, and the weeds prior to doing the topsoil and the application of your sod, this is what you're, going to, what you're going to get. It would seem like it'd be so much easier if they did that, but again, I, I don't think they do that here in the Philippines. Let me show you a really neat gardening tool for eradicating these weeds. And it's, it's a lot easier, especially if the ground isn't so saturated and you're having a hard time. You get a tool just like this right here. It's, um, they make this where you can actually cut off the root and you can pop it up. But remember, if you do that, if you cut it from the top to the root, the root is what's going to regenerate itself. It will come back. That plant will always come back 100% of the time. Uh, so let's look uh, something like this. Oh, let's, let's grab this guy right here. So if you take him and then you kind of break up the soil underneath, then he becomes very easy to pull out. But here, you see we got a little bit of bluegrass on there. I want to put that, I want to put this little piece of bluegrass, but even if it's only a piece this big right here, I want to put him back down. So anyway, we're going to close here in just a minute, but before we close, what we're going to do is we're going to do one shout out. We have one birthday shout out for today, March 5th, and it's for username on our channel, h 2 Dragon, Dragon One, H2O Dragon One, and his wife's name is Zenaida, and it is our birthday today. So anyway, Zenaida, we want to wish you a wonderful and happy birthday. Happy birthday. Anyway, as I said, we are going to close for today. You can see it's 5:36 right now, and you can <laughs> see our ironworks team are still working over our, over my shoulder here. Uh, they are very dedicated and they're trying hard to be able to get everything installed on the time schedule uh, that we set so that we have everything done within the next three weeks and they have a lot on their plate but they're working real hard to get that taken care of and we keep throwing more things at them and they're, they're, they're willing to head and do that as well remember today also we were supposed to have our electrician uh, my car my contractor promised that our electrician would be here today uh, our electrician did not show today i don't know what the problem is with that um, hopefully he comes uh, very soon maybe tomorrow maybe the next day hopefully tomorrow that would be nice uh, for tomorrow tomorrow is going to be a lot of the same of what you see today even our our glass installer kit he is going to be here tomorrow uh, that ended up being more of a challenge for some reason uh, than he expected I believe 
mounting those uh, the glass up underneath the counter remember the wall isn't exactly perfectly straight and they had some problems with some of the holes and so they really worked hard but he he assured us that that will get taken care of and completed tomorrow along with the i believe tomorrow he will also be doing the side light area on the side of where the stone is for those LED light strips and he will take, be taking the measurements as well uh, for the garage door windows downstairs and hopefully we can get that installed very quickly. I'm going to ask him if he doesn't mind doing a rush order on that. Uh, we want that finalized. Uh, and again, more work on the garage door tomorrow and more work on those tiles on the front of the house. I would be so glad when that front patio was completed and people can walk up and down the patio without walking around debris and tiles and mortar and right now there's a big X like the uh, police line uh, no crossing murder scene kind of thing right now that's what we have up there right now so that's it for today uh, again tomorrow is Wednesday right tomorrow is Wednesday and I don't know what okay. build day it is I think I messed up the build date the very beginning Tuesday. of this one and one of our I is, think it's Tuesday, is it, Tuesday? Uh, it is <laughs> tomorrow is going to be Tuesday uh, what? <laughs> What would I what would I do without uh, this this woman right here to keep me straight? So anyway, tomorrow is Tuesday, and again, I don't know what the bill day is. I admit, so one of the subscribers said uh, you missed the bill day. I corrected it on the vlog site on the episode number that put me back this morning. So we will be right. I promise you, tomorrow we will know what bill day the real bill day will be. So anyway, <laughs> until tomorrow, if you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen over there. And you'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time we upload a new video. So until tomorrow, you have a wonderful and blessed day.